Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing tonight? I just stopped and got this Gatorade. I got like the original Gatorade flavor, which I don't know what they call, lemon lime. Maybe it's not the original, but it, I always think of this color as the original. I've been drinking like one Gatorade a day, it seems like, anymore. I've been drinking so much water, too. I just did that lip scrub. I'm, I'm kind of addicted to these lip scrubs. Um... I did the bubble gum one earlier from Lush. I really, really like believe in them, you guys. Like, they make my lips so smooth. Like, it's crazy. And the thing is, is that like, since I've been using them, like, I feel like the chapsticks, like, I don't, like, I feel like they, like, help my lips more, if that makes sense. Um, because my lips are smoother. I totally understand now why people use lip scrubs. So anyway, um, but I've been using the bubble gum for the last two days. Bubble gum and, uh, the honey ones from Lush. Oh my lord. I am full, full right now. We, uh, went out to dinner tonight. So, let's see what my day was. I got up today and um, went into my office for a couple hours and wrote and got a lot done. And then I um, went and ran some errands and then I came home and made my videos and took a shower. I know it doesn't look like it, but I have my hair done and everything. Um, and we had marriage counseling tonight, which went really, really well. It's been exactly a year. Like last, the last time that we went was like our year of going. And um, so we talked about cutting it down and not going as often because things are going really well. And we just are finding that we don't have as much to talk about. <clears throat> So, um, but we didn't really come up with like a schedule of like how often we want to come or not come. Part of the problem is like every other week we go individually. So I think that one of the things that we're going to do is like right now keep it to couples counseling like every other week, but then like next week I go and Alex won't. And then two weeks later, he'll go and I won't. That's kind of like the, that's the thing we agreed to tonight in there. So, um, but things are going really, really well. I love couples counseling so much. And um, we went to dinner afterwards. And I was going to go to my meeting with Tanya. But I was like, you know what? Like, I think I'm going to um, try to start saving the Tuesday nights that I go to couples counseling with Alex is like our like one of our like little nights that we go out to dinner to, together. So, um, and it's nice for us to do something with another couple, which I really, really, if you're like, I really think that that is a good thing for couples is to have other friends that are couples that you go and do things with, you know, like, especially if it's like one other couple, like I think it's great to go out to dinner with like two or three other couples, but I think to have one couple that you consistently go and do things with that like you have an investment in their marriage and they have an investment in yours. Like, I think that's really a, like, that's healthy, you know? And, um, Melissa and Jason are just that cu couple for us. So we went to Cheesecake Factory because that's kind of easy for us. It's real close for all of us. Um, I mean, Melissa and Jason live two minutes from us anyway. So we met there at eight o'clock and we had a great dinner and um, we had this hilarious waitress. And Melissa always wants to get cheesecake. So we got cheesecake and split at the end, Oreo, which is why I'm full because I like never get dessert. And um, 
But if you put a dessert in front of me, I'm probably gonna eat it. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, Cheesecake Factory does have pretty great cheesecake, obviously. And it was fun. We had a good dinner. We just kind of laughed and talked about different stuff. And we're gonna do some trips with them this year. Some, uh, we're gonna try to do Ultra next, uh, March, but then we're also looking at, they go and do Halloween at Disney every year, and it, like they've always done it, and um, so we're going to try to do that with them this year as well, and then we want to take like a weekend longer, like weekend trip um, over the summer. They love Vegas as well. They got married at the uh, Bellagio, and so we may do like an anniversary trip um, all of us together and go do that in Vegas for our wedding anniversary this year because we were going to renew our vows but I think we're going to wait till next year and do that because um, we just like haven't really been planning it or putting any time to it and we'd also like to have we, we, we don't want to have more than two couples but maybe one more than just Melissa and Jason and we don't really we're thinking maybe like our friends Kizzy and Sam so um we haven't really talked a whole lot about it. But anyway, and then we came back, and I was going to do a live stream, and I told Alex, I said, I'm just going to lay down for 15 minutes, and he was watching the Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion, and um, so I laid down for like 15 minutes with the dogs, and I was out, and then he came upstairs, he's like, babe, are you still going to do your live stream? And I go, what time is it? And he goes, it's 12.15, and I was like, no, <laughs> not tonight. He, I said, it's way too late to get on live stream. So I got up and I read for a little while and um why is that car going so slow? Um I read for like a half an hour. I've been reading a little bit all throughout the day for my book club. So we're reading My Sweet Audrina by V.C. Andrews. I kind of like forgot how weird this book was. I haven't read a V.C. Andrews book since I was in high school. And um I mean, I remember the Flowers in the Attic series, and we watched them with Melissa and Jason, the movies on Lifetime, which were really bad. But I kind of forgotten, like, how weird they are. And you know what's really strange is that, like, whenever I reread a book, I, I don't, first of all, I don't like to reread books. Two things I don't love to do. Reread books and rewatch movies. Unless it's, like, a movie like bridesmaids that has like funny lines that I could just have in the background and watch over and over mean girls something stupid like that you know I also love like it, it's funny because it's like any of those Melissa McCarthy movies like I can watch over and over and over again like Identity Thief like Tammy like I can have those movies in the background and watch them over and over and over again I don't know why it's always her movies but they're just like slapstick and funny and um but I don't, like, I can just kind of lay there and be, like, you know, stupid and out of it and watch them. Um, but, like, I wouldn't, like, To Kill, I mean, I was going to say I wouldn't watch dramas over and over and over again. But, like, To Kill Mockingbird I would once a year. You know, other movies like Out of Africa. But I don't know that I would sit and, like, watch it intently. You know what I mean? Like, I would have it on in the background. Um, like, while I was cleaning or doing something. Like, that's a big thing. Like, whenever I'm cleaning the house, I always, like, or, you know, I'm, like, cleaning up at the end of the day after I've, like, done my videos and I'm putting stuff away or whatever. I'll, like, uh, get on demand and I'll, like, pick a movie to, like, watch. Um, this police officer up here, his lights keep on, like, going off. And then, like, he turns them off. And they come back on again. I'm wondering what's going on. And now he's, like, turning around that way. put a movie on in the background and like I try to pick movies like recently I've been trying to pick movies that I wanted to see and so like I'll watch a little bit over over like three days so that's what I did with that snatched movie although that wasn't like really a movie that I really cared to see that bad but um I did that I just did that with the Goosebumps movie which was pretty cute um I thought it, the concept was great time sitting 
like unless like Alex and I designate like a Friday or a Saturday night that we're just gonna watch like three movies like I miss those days but we don't do it as often as we do anymore but I also have a really hard time like I just don't have great attention span to sit there and do that and um and he has so many TV shows that he's always wanting to catch up on. Um, somebody asked me, oh, I wanted to say this really quick. Somebody asked me if I had ever um, read the series. They asked me this in my live stream the other night, so I don't know if you watch my vlog, but if you do, then I'm, they said, have you ever read the series, uh, young adult series, Blue, like it start, the first one's like Blue is for Dangerous. I just found it today. I was like going through my bookshelf for a booktube video and I found it today, so I do have it. Um, so many books that I want to read that I haven't read. This is going to be like the summer of reading for me. I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah. I think for the summer, I have this uh, TV VCR combo that like I mean, obviously, I don't watch TV on it because we don't get cable through it. But, like, I only, um, like, watch movies on it, like old VCR tapes. I have it in my office. I'm thinking about bringing it home for the summer and, um, like, sitting on the patio and watching movies at night. I think that would be really fun. And I have all kinds of, like, VCR tapes from back in the day um, of movies because I collected, you know, VCR tapes back in the day. Did you guys ever collect VCR tapes? I have so many. And, um, I mean, now they're, like, pointless because what are you going to do with them, right? And, um... So maybe we could sit out there and watch some scary movies and... I always think stuff like that sounds fun and then I get too scared. Like, every summer I always say I'm going to read uh, Helter Skelter outside, and then I get too scared. But if you've ever read Helter Skelter, it's, like, scary. It's, like, seriously scary. I didn't realize how many people were doing this book club thing with me until I started, like, um getting the tweets and the Snapchats of people like where they were at in the book or that they had bought their book. I think that's so much fun. I'm so happy that so many people are doing it. But anyway, um, so yeah, it was a really, really good day. And then uh, tomorrow, same kind of thing. Like I'm going to write and then make my videos and then I don't really have anything else to do so I'm going to probably do a live stream tomorrow night because Alex works late on Wednesdays. Um, but it is also the 18th is Pee-Pee's birthday. Happy birthday, Pee-Pee. Happy birthday, Pee-Pee. Happy birthday, Pee-Pee. We love you very much. <laughs> and uh, he is 12 years old. Alex and I kind of got real sad on the way home from eating dinner because I was telling him about it. I was like, well, I'm going to go buy him a bunch of stuff tomorrow and uh, like a special dinner. And I mean, I know he doesn't know. I'm not stupid. But um, I asked Alex, if I was like, are you going to like buy him some stuff for his birthday? Like, you know, some like little toys or whatever. And he was like, yeah. And um, I said, okay, I'm going to too. And um not a big fan of driving next to semis and one of my biggest things that I do not like is when semis are like tailing my ass um, so anyway we kind of were like silent in the phone in the, in the phone silent in the car for a second and I said are you okay and he was like yeah he was like I just it's gonna make me sad and I go well I know and I said because I mean you know we just a couple months ago got this diagnosis that you know, PB has heart disease, and so we don't know. Like, this might be PB's last birthday. I'll probably be a mess talking about it tomorrow. So, um, but I said, you know, it is sad. I said, but because the doctor told us she would like to. When I asked her, I said, you know, how long do you think that PB will live? She said, I would like to get him to 13 and a half, and it'll be 12 tomorrow. So, um, 
but he's doing really well, so who knows, you know, I mean, but I also know that it could take a turn like that, um, now Sunday, he was coughing a lot, it was really scary to Alex, because we hadn't, like, seen him cough that much in a long time, um, but I also don't know how much of it's not the change of weather, you know what I mean, and, um, so, I, on Monday, because she had told me that, like, if the coughing gets really bad, we could start giving him, um, an extra half of the Lasix in the morning, but just don't do it at night, just do it in the morning, because we give him a full tablet in the morning, a full tablet at night, and, um, so I gave him, like, a fourth of an extra tablet on Monday, because I didn't want to, like, go, you know, like, all in, and, um, he didn't cough at all on Monday, like, not one bit, and today he didn't cough at all, so, like, you know, that we always have that to, like, save it, and, I mean, the reality is we just, like, don't want it to get to the point where the coughing is so bad that he's in pain, obviously, so as long as we can prevent the cough or stop the cough, and that was always her intention, you know, um, and I don't know, like, you know, then tonight he was on the bed, and, I mean, it was like he was a three-year-old puppy again. I mean, he was, like, running around and, you know, like, acting crazy and rolling around and ro rolling over and humping Tucker. And, um, a lot of times during the day with me, he is just, like, really, really lethargic and just lays in bed and doesn't really want to do a whole lot, you know? He either, like, will hear me, like, as soon as I start talking into the camera, he, like, hears me, and I can hear him jump down from the bed, and then he'll come down, and I have to start the camera over, because, like, you can hear him, like, come down there, um, which is cute to me, like, that he knows that's, like, our thing, kind of, or something, I don't know, but, like, it's that it literally is as soon as I go, hey, you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back, of course I'm back, I hear clump, like, down off the bed, and then he's coming down the stairs, and, um, and then he, like, comes right to me, like, he, and he'll just sit in there in the chair while I'm doing my videos, um, like, all three of them, bump, bump, bump in a row, because, well, you know what, that's interesting, I'll tell you guys my process tonight, since I've never really talked about that on here, filming videos, but, um, but then other times he'll just lay there in bed, and, you know, but then as soon as Alex comes home in the night, or as soon as I come home in the early evening, and I've got food or whatever, and I'm waiting for Alex, like, around six or seven, he seems to start, like, getting his energy back, but, you know, I read this article, I don't know how long ago it was, I do remember mentioning it on here, about that dogs need, like, 10 to 12 hours of sleep at night, did you guys know that? Like, that's crazy, you know? Boo and, uh, Tucker sleep a lot, too. I think out of all three of them, Tucker probably sleeps the least. And, um, he's always just very alert. It's so funny, because, like, late at night when we're going to bed, when the dogs are, like, uh, like, in bed with us, like, PB will be, like, under the covers by my leg, and Boo is, like, under the covers, like, by my chest, and Tucker, like, sits next to me, and he's, like, this, uh, like, looking around, and I'll always, like, talk to him, and, uh, <laughs> it's, like, and then I'll scratch at him right here on the back of his neck, and he always, like, paws at me to do more. Um, but anyway... Are you guys interested at all in, like, my process of putting videos together? You're like, yeah, no, not at all. Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, anyway, for anybody that's a little interested, here is my process of filming videos. Now, this would be, like, not, um, like, if I was doing a rant video in the car or something like that. This would literally be me sitting in that chair filming my videos. So, I always set up the lights first. And I have a ring light, and then I have two side lights. But I have recently just been using the ring light, because um, I've noticed that it doesn't really make a difference. Um, and then behind me, in the chair where I sit, like above, like if you see where there's like a plant and like coral, um, we have a bunch of plants there. We have a picture of PP and a candles, and I take all that stuff down and I put it in the kitchen because it auto-focuses on that stuff instead of me. Um, and then I plug in all the lights. That whole process takes me about five, ten minutes. And, um, well, I guess to say before this, I always sit down and kind of like jot out my ideas. Now, I usually, it depends on how much time I have. Like, 
if, if it's early in the day and it's like one o'clock or, or noon and I'm filming my videos, I'm like either like you guys are interested in this or you could care less, so I apologize. But um, but since I've never shared it on here before, why not? Um, but if it's early in the day and I'm filming videos, I'll typically film my um, Peterisms and my booktube channel video first. And so let me explain to you what happens. Once I'm done filming the video, I then render it um, in the software. And then once the video is done being rendered, I upload it to YouTube. So it usually takes me, depending on the video, like let's say if my video is like 20 minutes, it takes me about a half an hour, 40 minutes to render. And then it takes me usually 20, 25 minutes to upload it to YouTube. Um, if it's shorter, if it's like a like booktube or a Peterism's video that's like 10, 12 minutes, it usually takes me 20 minutes to render it, and it takes me about less than 15 minutes to upload it to YouTube. Um, and then the whole process of like tagging it and copying and pasting like what I put underneath it and all that kind of stuff, the thumbnail, that literally takes me no time at all. Um, but you guys, if you look at all that stuff with mine, you know, like I don't put in a ton of effort into a thumbnail. I mean, I literally know YouTubers that spend three hours just on a thumbnail. I personally, this is just my personal belief, and maybe just applying to my channel, I don't know, but I, I believe it for all channels. I don't, I'm not a believer that a, that a thumbnail makes a difference. I mean, I think it can, but I think if people are coming to your videos like, I don't think that if I had some extravagant thumbnail on my vlogs, I don't think it's gonna get somebody to watch an hour vlog that doesn't like me. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, I think at this point, people know who I am, they know what I'm about. You know, new people that find me are gonna watch me because they're interested in what the title is, but I don't think that, like, that's why I just don't spend a whole lot of time on my thumbnails. You know, could I put more time and energy into it? Absolutely. You know, maybe at some point that's something that I'll do. I don't know. It's not that I don't know how to do it. I know how to use PicMonkey very well. I've used it with other stuff. But I actually use the PicMonkey app. Um, and it takes me two seconds to do it and throw it up on my video. So it's very easy for me. Um, I don't know. I You know, years ago... Um, when I was working in treatment, we had this woman come in and like this company and they were like, uh, you know, like business consultants when they come in and they tell you how to like better do like the work, you know what I'm talking about? They like evaluate your business and tell you what you could be doing better or not, whatever. The yellow light is on, uh, on the camera, so it'll be shutting off in a second. But anyway, I remember like I said to her, like we had this big meeting, like with all the people that worked there. Um, and I said to her, I said, what's your best piece of advice that you give every business and she said take the one thing that you're putting the most time and effort into or time and energy into and getting the least results and get rid of it and she said and you will double your productivity and I was like oh I think that's really really interesting you know so like if there's something that you're doing no matter what your business is and like you're spending all this time and energy doing. And I have applied this to every business that I own, to my writing, to my books, to my YouTube, to everything that I do. Like, I always think that way. Like, okay, what am I putting too much time and energy into it and, and getting the, real, the least amount back? And that's what I get rid of. Does that make sense? So, like, for me to spend three hours on a thumbnail is pointless. I just, I, I don't believe in that. But that's just for me. I know other channels that swear that the thumbnails get in the views. Um... But will it keep people there? I don't know. Um, so anyway, then I kind of figure out like what I'm gonna make videos about. Now, if it is earlier and I do like my Peterisms and my booktube videos first, I typically sit down and I like, I kind of, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, I can't think of what I'm trying to say. I try to, um, boom, 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 boom. Kind of, I, I jot down like what I want to talk about with each video. So usually, like my Peterisms, I kind of know right away like what I want to talk about. And on that channel specifically, I try not to script it at all because I just want to talk from my heart. Um, on my booktube video, like let's say if I pick a book tag, I just go in and I do the book tag. I find it and then I just like do it. And then, or if I'm going to do a book, you know, a video about like five books that I love, I pull the five books and I just kind of talk about it. Booktube is very easy for me. I love books, you know, whatever. So I don't have to script either one of those a lot. Um, my drama channel, I mean, I don't script any of my videos, honestly, um, because I just get really, really sidetracked if I do that. I can't believe it's letting me talk this long without shutting off. Um, 
So I get those done. The reason I like to get those done first and then do my drama videos is because I like to be, like it's a total different mindset. Like if I'm sitting there, like today I did mine about like letting go of control. If I'm talking about that, that's kind of like a serious topic. To then go from that, like I have to shut off like mentally and then go into that, like the Kathleen Lights video. So I did the Kathleen Lights video first today talking about like the drama and the tea because it's like two different hats, you know what I mean? And um, I like to be focused on whatever I'm doing. So then, like, I literally get rid of, like, the fans, the props, everything. Like, I take them, I put them back away, and then I bring them back out. Now, if it's later in the day, I always do my drama video first because I want to make sure I get it up first. Um, and, uh, and it takes the longest to render. So, um, like, then I'll sit down there and I'll do that, and I go get the fans and the props, and I kind of stand there and think about what props I might want to use, and, like, you know, do I want to use a drama phone? Like, I haven't used a drama phone for a couple days, so it'll probably come out tomorrow. You know, PP will be in the video tomorrow because it's his birthday. Does PP want to wear a hat? I think about this stuff. I really do, you know? Like, what will people think is funny? What will people think is stupid? Um, no matter what I'm doing the video about, the song I sing at the end, at the beginning always matches is something about the song. I believe a lot in theming things. So, like, there's more of a method to my mass to my magic than people believe, or met method to my madness than people believe. You know, like, uh, like today I sang I've Got a Golden Ticket, and then I talked about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Like, the song always correlates with the video. So if you went back and you watched five of my videos, you probably might not have caught it because sometimes it's not that transparent but like you might not like if I sing every rose has its thorn there's a reason okay because that is gonna play out oh it just stopped right when I was getting to the good part <sighs> oh lord okay I'm back I just saw a shooting star out here in the country so anyway um so yeah I pick out all the props and stuff like that and then I just sit down there and I film it well so let's say if I do my drama video first, I'll like get the props. I think, well, a lot of times, so if it's like, so for example, today, um, it was like about ColourPop Cosmetics and Kathleen Lights. And so I had reached out to her for a statement. Yesterday, I had like kind of researched the stuff that was sent to me so that I kind of knew what was going on with it. Um, or that I knew what was going on with it. And, um, yeah, and I tried to, like, kind of figure out, you know, like, this and that and whatever. And I'd watch some of the other videos and that kind of stuff. So, um, and then I sit down and I film my video. And, um, then once the video is filmed, I render it while I'm filming my other videos, if that makes sense, so that I can, um, so that they can be render, so it can be rendering. I'm like turning around this car, it's like this big truck is right behind me. So that, um, you know, it's all about time management. So anyway, um, so then when that's rendering, I'm filming my other two videos because they're shorter. And then I sit down and I put my props away and all that kind of stuff. And then I film my, usually the next one I do is my Peterism's video. And then the last one I do is my um, booktube video. Um, and then once I'm done with those, the drama video is usually like rendered and ready to upload. So I upload it to YouTube and then I render the other two. And then when the drama video is done, like while I'm sitting there, I like make the thumbnail for it. And then I upload um, the Peterisms video or the booktube. It just depends on which one I like usually did first. Um, I mean, because I switch back and forth between the two. But usually I do the Peterisms ones first. Um, oh, uh, this is the other thing. Like, so, well, I'll do talk about the vlog at the end. But, and then I upload them. And then once they're uploaded and completed, I like watch them back, like immediately. And then I put in like, you know, the end card and all that kind of stuff and the thumbnail. And then I publish it like right away. After I've watched it once all the way through, I publish it and um, that's what I do. <laughs> that's how I get the videos up. It's really like, there's not a whole lot of like deep magic and seriousness to it, you know? And um, now every night when I get done 
driving around, listening to my audiobook, going to the casino, whatever I do, going to Tanya's. When I go home after my vlog is done, the, I immediately walk in the house. <laughs> you guys were like, okay, you're really telling us all the details, aren't you? I immediately go into the house and um, I upload the vlog. And so while it's uploading, I usually take the dogs outside and um, then I come back inside and it's, it usually takes me, if it's about an hour long, it usually takes me about 10 or 15 minutes just to upload um, into the computer, like from the camera to the computer. So then I um, upload it to the computer and like while I'm there, I either like uh, do my prayers and meditations or I do my gratitude list. And then once it's done and I've done that, then I switch it back to, um, then I upload it to the software so I can render it. And that usually, because it's so long, it usually takes me two to three hours to render my vlog. So I just like turn the lights down on my computer and I render it overnight. So that when I wake up in the morning, the, the vlog is already rendered and ready to be uploaded to YouTube. And um, then I go to bed. I usually sit there for actually a little bit, like 10 or 15 minutes after I've got all that done and I read um, on the couch next to the kitchen. And um, and then when I get up in the morning, like before I go to my office to write or run errands or whatever I'm doing, if I'm just like kind of hanging around the house, like I immediately, like after I've taken the dogs outside and given PP his medicine and all that kind of stuff, the first thing that I immediately do is I upload my vlog to YouTube so that, um, because that also takes like an hour to do because it's so much longer. Usually takes 47 minutes. I don't know why it's always 47 minutes, but it usually takes 47 minutes. So I upload it to uh, YouTube. So people always ask me, they're like, how do you get so much, you know, they're like, it was interesting, I got a comment. I don't know who this is, I apologize. But I got a comment on my vlog and it was like, something about, I said something about having ADHD and, um, you know, like, they said something like, no, you don't have ADHD, you have great time management, or something like that, because you don't get distracted. I do get very distracted, um, but when I got sober, and I started seeing this therapist, uh, was when I, like, officially, like, started talking to somebody about being ADHD, and, like, um, never took, you know, any kind of medicine for it or anything because I was sober at that point. And when I got sober, it's a little different now, but, and there's a lot of medications that you can take, um, that aren't necessarily habit forming, like Stratera and Vyvanse. But when I got sober, it was like, still like, you know, Ritalin, I think Adderall was around then, I don't remember. But anyway, you know, Concerta, that were all stimulants. So somebody being in recovery and taking like an ADHD medication was really frowned upon. I mean, a lot by the recovery community, not so much by doctors. And so I just didn't take it. And I had read a lot of books and one of them was called Driven to Distraction. And it was about people that had like adult ADHD and adult ADD because it changes forms over time, like from being a juvenile to being like an adult. And when I started reading all of these like case studies about people that were like CEOs of companies and you know like highly highly successful that had like severe ADHD and ADD and they had learned how to turn it into an asset and I found that really really fascinating and so I was like you know what I can do the same thing and that was where I became a list maker and um, you know like back in the day I would like keep a list of like you know um, everybody that I was, you know, every patient and then all the things that I had to do. I've talked about that on here before. And, you know, I was really highly proficient on getting all of that stuff done. I mean, every review, they were always like, you're so good about getting stuff done. And, um, and I've been a list maker my entire life. I mean, every day, well, since that point, every day today, I still keep a list of like everything that I have to do on a daily basis. And, um, if I don't get it done, I cross it off and I make it, I put it on my list for the next day. Um, and I always put on little random things on there as a hint. If you're wanting to be a list maker because you want to, um, maybe like get more accomplished, like having a list helps me be more accomplished. And as stupid as this sounds, like I feel a lot of accomplishment in crossing things off the list because I know that I got them done. But one of the things that helps me is putting things on there that like I know I'm going to do, but don't take a lot of effort, if that makes sense. Like going to the post office or getting coffee or reading because these are things I enjoy doing, right? 
But the other thing I learned to do is that the things that I love to do, like write, I have to put at the top of the list. Um, if I put them at the bottom of the list, somehow my mind, like, categorically, like, I think ranks those things as what's important and what's not important. So if you looked at my list, typically on a daily basis, every day it's like, write, write a chapter, uh, film videos for the day. Like, those are always, like, in my top two or three. Um, you know, tomorrow it's like, buy PB birthday presents. Um, but, you know, clean house might be number nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but I put all, I don't, and I don't, and listen, I don't anymore put clean house. I put like dust, living room, or, you know, clean kitchen, because I'm very more, I'm more specific about what I want to get done, because if I just put clean house, that's so ambiguous, that like, I'm, I know that like, I'm never going to look at it and go, yeah, the house is clean, you know? So I have to be more specific about the tasks that I want to complete. Um, and the other thing is, is that when I first started doing lists, like, let's say if I had 10 things on a list, I did not feel accomplished unless I had, like, gotten everything on the 10 on the list done. And I think that it led to me really overworking back in the day. Um, and, you know, putting in, like, 55 hour, 60 week, 60 hour weeks because I wouldn't leave. You know, I put my job ahead of everything else and I really wouldn't leave unless I had everything on my list done, if that makes sense. I don't do that anymore. You know, like obviously I'm not working someplace like that, but, um, you know, today I'm like, if I get four of them done, I'm like, wow, I got four things done. You know, um, I'm a little bit more accepting of that and I just cross them off and put them on the list for tomorrow. It's just not that deep. I don't have to feel bad about it. You know what I mean? So, um, but lists have really, really helped me with focusing a lot and getting things accomplished. And that was one of the things that I had read, like in these case studies back in the day about people that were really successful and had ADHD. Um, Yeah. Also, like, one task at a time is really important for me. Like, write, and then when I'm done writing, no, like, I'm not going to, like, well, I might come back to it later. You know what I mean? So, like, write. Make videos. You know? Go run errands. Get coffee. Buy PB birthday presents. Like, I look at one task at a time. Because then when that task is completed, it's like I can move on to the next thing. Um, and I'm very much like that in running my errands. Like, I always keep a list of errands that I have to do. So, like, let's say if I'm going to, like, go to the bookstores, get coffee, go to the post office, buy PB birthday presents. Let me think of what else I have to do tomorrow. Um, there was something else I wanted to do. going to a birthday party on Thursday, buy birthday presents, and I'm going to go to Barnes & Noble to do that. So, like, let's say if those are five things I have to do, I'll put them in order of where I'll go. So, first, it'd be, like, coffee, because that's the first thing, of course. <laughs> and then, probably, like, um, the first half price books, Barnes & Noble, second half price books, buy PB birthday presents, post office. Because I do it, like, in a row of, like, where it takes me driving-wise. Excuse me. And then it's, um, I feel very task oriented. I don't know. It's just really, I don't get distracted the way that I used to. Now, like on my vlog talking, I do because I'm just rambling, you know, from one thing to the next. And, uh, you know, it's easy for me to get super, super distracted. And, um, and that if you like watch my videos, like I was watching my video today that I did on Kathleen lights and there was a part where I started talking about going to the casino. Well, like, in my head, before I started the video, I wanted to talk about, like, scratch-off tickets, like, lottery tickets, because I, I was going to, like, make the parallel between these uh, pallets and scratch-off tickets. Well, I never got there, because I got sidetracked talking about something else, and that is something that happens to me. Like, if I get, and I get frustrated about it, like, when I watch it back, because I'm like, damn it, you know? Um, and that is probably where it is better that I don't edit, because I think a lot of, like, the natural 
like delivery of like what I like about doing videos, I would be I think I would become so frustrated with the editing process that like and having to go back and refilm a part. I'm I'm just like, you know, for me, it's just like I love just posting the video and then it is just kind of it's very much like for me, like raw commentary and it just is what it is. And if I forgot a piece of part, you know, I forgot a part, you know what I mean? And it's just not that deep and I have to forgive myself for that and move on. Um and I'm also not a believer in perfection. So, you know, it's like, it is what it is. I think had it been caught, like, you know, when I was younger, I definitely, like, for me, where I think it's changed is, like, this person that you see today is not who I was in high school. I think it's gone from ADD to ADHD, and if you don't know what the difference is, so like ADD is attention deficit disorder. It's like you get, it, it's hard to focus, you know, you get very dreamy, but you can kind of focus on, I'm, I'm like really dumbing it down for you guys right now, but a lot of times you can focus on things you're very interested in, like reading or like video games or music or something like that. Now attention, uh, ADHD is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. That's definitely where I'm at today, where I'm like kind of all over the place. But that's not who I was in high school or, like, elementary school. Like, I was definitely the kid that, like, you know, like, when the teacher was talking, I was, like, out the window thinking about, you know, like, oh, this weekend I want to do that. I mean, that was who I was. I could, I had no focus whatsoever. And, um, in fact, like, on my report cards, consistently dreamy. When I was younger, the talking was a huge issue. Um, but I almost kind of think that I was so shamed by teachers for talking so much that, like, I stopped at some point. Like, you know, so many teachers would say things to me about, like, you talk so much, you talk so much, you talk so much. You know, like, you're interrupting the class and blah, 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 whatever. That at some point, I just kind of was like, I just gave up. I just was like, I don't even care, you know? Like, I'm not going to, why be present for a teacher that doesn't like me to begin with? Um... But then, like, over time, like, in junior high, it kind of switched. The other thing is, is that the bullying in junior high switched, too. Whereas it had been, like, just, like, teasing earlier, it now was, like, cruel. So, I was kind of more hiding, if that makes sense. Even, like, right out in the middle of class. I mean, people were really cruel. It was really cruel shit that happened. And so, I just kind of was, like, trying to be invisible to some degree. So I, I wasn't talkative in classes. I was very quiet, you know? And um, I think maybe to some degree that's why. But anyway, report cards always, like teacher's notes home always said, Peter is very, very dreamy. Like dreamy was the word they always used. I think there are worse things you can be in life than dreamy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> if you have to be something, why not dreamy, I guess? I don't mind that I was dreamy. I still think I am dreamy. And I kind of fluctuate, you know? It's like, there are times that, like, I'm very amped up, and then there are other times that I'm just kind of like, like, Alex noticed it in counseling today. He was kind of like, you're deep. He always says deep in thought. Like, he'll say, you're deep in thought. And I'm like, am I? Like, no, I don't, I don't know. I just feel kind of like, oh. Sometimes I just kind of check out. Um, it's kind of nice sometimes, too. Like, I feel like... I feel so blessed to have a life where I do so many things that I love to do that it's kind of nice to just like, check out. You know what I mean? Like, my buxom lip plumper, um, which Alex tonight used, and he was like, this kind of makes your lips pink, but I don't think it does. Um, I get so many messages from people in college 
and they'll say like, you know, what's a big piece of advice? <laughs> I'm always like, buy a house early. But um, I think, you know, buying property is a great financial investment, but that's just my two cents. Um, but they'll say like, what, uh, you know, like what, like what is a great advice for your future? And I think like planning, you know, like planning for your future, like where you want to be in 10 years or 20 years, even if you don't make it there, you know, or even if the road takes you a different way, that's okay. But where would you like to be? Because there were a lot of things that like I wanted to happen, you know, by the time that I was this age, like being retired early was very, very important to me. And it wasn't so much that I want to be retired, like just not work and travel, like, you know, I didn't want to not do anything. I wanted to be able to devote my time to creative ventures that I really, really enjoyed. And it did two things for me. It allowed me to put everything that I had into my career at that time because I knew that there was a time limit on it, if that makes sense, which also allowed me to walk away from it. So, you know, like when I was ready to walk away from it, I didn't have a problem doing that because I was like, you've put your all into it forever, you know, like, so now walk away from it, be proud of what you've done and let it go. And and I'm really happy that I did that. I think more people should do that with their careers, you know? Instead of like, I think, working for 35, 40 years and being so burnt out that when you left and then walking away one day, you know, at 65, 70, which a lot of people don't have the choice, you know? But from an early age, you know, I had conversations with my dad at 22, 23, 24 and said, like, here's the deal. Like, I want to be retired by like 50. What do I need to do? You know, and my dad and I talked about it and he said, these are some things I would suggest. And, you know, this is some things I would suggest. And I did the things that my dad told me to do. And, you know, thank God they worked to my advantage. And, um, but, you know, I think, like, you really have to have a plan for what, you know, but my dad also said to me, like, but what are you going to do at 50 if you're retired? Like, are you just going to be, like, done doing anything? And I was like, no. I was like, you know, like, I want to write. Like, I want to start this. I might want to start that. You know, I had all these different ideas for things I might want to do, you know? Like, I thought, I really thought for a long time I would want to open, like, a little store. Like, I was talking about this last night. And, um... Now, I don't think a coffee shop bookstore would do financially real well. <laughs> I don't know. But I just don't think it would. But um, for a long time, I thought it would be really fun to, you know, open some kind of little store or something like that. I would really enjoy that, you know. And um, I just don't know what that would look like realistically. I don't really have that desire today. So, But back in the day, like, you know, when I first started talking to my dad, he was like, okay, well... What do the finances need to look like so that at 50 you can step away from whatever you're doing at that time? You know, my dad is just a genius when it comes to that kind of stuff. And he's just been super helpful in my life to me and I'm very thankful for it. But you have to have a plan, you know, and um, I don't know. I had like a list of like five things that I wanted that, kind of bigger things that I want in my life to look like by this time, you know? And, um, it's just such a blessing when you get to do the things you want to do, you know? I have a plan now for like the next 10 years, you know? And I think like, it's interesting, like people always say to me things about like only about YouTube. It's like, well, I don't really just think in terms of YouTube. Like, I love doing YouTube, right? But I don't know that YouTube's going to be around forever. And, um... But I'm also kind of like, if it wasn't, I would just go into the next platform because I love making videos, you know? I think Chris Crocker is a perfect example of that, of, like, you know, going from one platform to the next if what you don't... isn't working for you or you don't like it. And, um... But... There's a lot of things tied into my writing that I want to do. Like, I feel like that's the next step, you know? The memoir writing. I'd like to do a lot of public speaking. Um, and I've been asked to do some public speaking recently, which is really, really cool. Um, and, uh... So... We'll see. Life 
this fun, you know? Like, a lot of times you don't know what's right around the corner. And sometimes, like, the magic and the mystery comes, like, in unexpected places. You know, like, the magic of life comes un unexpectedly. And sometimes it's, like, blessings in disguise, you know? Like, a lot of times, like, the bad shit that happens opens doors that you wouldn't expect. At least that has been my experience in life, you know? Is that, like, a lot of times things that looked on the outside looking in to be something negative turned around to be something positive. And, um, for me, that's how I try to look at it, you know? And I try to look at everything as, okay, so what are you gonna do with this? Or, like, you know, when something comes my way, it's like, um, you know, like, now, how can you turn this into a positive or something like that? You know what I mean? And, um, you only have one life. You have to live it to the fullest, right? You know what I mean? You have to make the most of your life. And, uh, if while you're thinking about wanting to do something, you think to yourself, like, I would regret it if I didn't do that. You know what I mean? Or I might regret it if I didn't do that. And I'm not talking about, like, we were talking about bucket list things tonight at dinner, and Jason was saying that, like, he wants to go to Monaco for this, like, car race. That's, like, one of his bucket race, or his bucket list things. And what was the other thing that he wanted to do? It was, like, funny. It was, like, anyway. Um... But we were talking about bucket list stuff, you know? And there's bucket list stuff, and then I think there's things that come along that, like, if the opportunity arises, even if you're afraid to take the risk or do something, but you think to yourself, I would regret it if I didn't take this chance, you have to take the chance. You have to, you know? Because if you don't, you'll never know what was going to happen otherwise, if that makes sense. You know, and that is really how, like, you know, May 11th is my two-year anniversary on BookTube. I cannot tell you what happened on May 10th, but that is really, really what happened to me. Like, I remember May 10th. I sat there and I watched, like, well, it was a couple days before that. I had started, like... Like, I had gotten the channel, like, name, because I thought to myself, I might want to do this. So, like, I got the channel name. I don't remember what date that was. But I hadn't, like, when I got the channel name, I wasn't convinced that I was going to do BookTube. And I had kind of, like, like, I said something to Tanya, and she was, like, and she's always really supportive of, like, every dream that I have. And she's, like, you're just so busy, like... You're so busy, you have this, you do this volunteer work, you do this, you did this, and, you know, like, do you really have time to do, like, a YouTube channel where you're talking about books? I'm like, well, I don't have to post every day, I can just post, like, you know, twice a week, and she's like, I know, but still, like, you know, do you know enough about it? And, and so I really kind of thought about it. So I think it was, like, three or four days before I started my channel that I got the name, the YouTube channel, and um, then I'll have to go back in there and look. Um, that would be interesting to see. But I do remember the night before, I had watched, like, all of these booktube videos. And I remember I was watching um, Jesse the Reader. And Jesse the Reader is, like, this really big booktuber. Like, he's been around for a while. And he has, like, a hun he has, like hundreds of thousands of, like, followers and stuff like that. And, like, his he does this thing where he always pops up from the bottom of his videos. And I was like, you know what? Like... I want to do this. Like, I want to be part of this, you know? And it was like, I started watching, it was some tag. I can't even remember what it was now, but I started watching it. And from his, I went to like, I fell down the rabbit hole of like this tag on booktube. I don't even remember what tag it was. Just some, some random tag, you know, 50 TMI booktube tag or something. I can't remember what it was, but like, I fell down the rabbit hole and I watched like, uh, if you're a booktuber, you'll know, but it like, you know, Christine, and then I watched Natasha's video, and then, like, Sasha's video, and, like, you know, there was all these, like, you know, uh, uh, with Benjamin of Tomes, and I watched, like, George Lester, I watched, like, ten videos of the same tag, 
And I was like, I want to do this. Like, with every video, I just, like, inside of me, I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. And I remember sitting, laying in bed that night talking to Alex. And we were just kind of laying there talking. And I said, yeah, I think, I'm really thinking a lot about starting this booktube video or channel. And he was like, okay. And I was, like, telling him about it. And I hadn't really mentioned it to him before. And he goes, another project? And I was like, because I'm kind of known for starting projects and not finishing them. And he and I said, yeah, but I really think that I would stick to this and whatever. And he was like, I mean, okay. like, And he really, he wasn't not supportive of it, but I wouldn't say that he was excited about it. He was just like, okay, here's another idea of Peter's, you know. And then the next day, I was sitting there, and I was like screwing around, and... I don't even know what happened. I, like, started, like, a Twitter, and the next thing you know, I was like, fuck it. I'm doing this. And I uploaded the video, and I didn't tell him. I didn't tell Tanya. I didn't tell anybody. I uploaded that video on BookTube, and it was so much like the show Haters Back Off with Miranda Sings, where, like, she sits there and she watches it to see if anybody gets... And I got, like, no views, you know what I mean? Like, for, like, two hours. And then I remember I got, like, five or six views, you know? And um, it was cool, and that's how it all started for me. But I would never have known. I would never have known what any of this is like. The vlogging, the drama channel, any of it had I not started with that. I had to take a risk, you know? And I had made videos previously, years before, but they were stupid and they didn't do anything. I mean, I didn't know, you know, like, like really being committed to doing something and taking time to do it on a daily basis. And everything that I ever needed to learn about YouTube, I learned on BookTube. And had I not been willing to take that risk, I wouldn't have known. But I do know that in that moment, the question I ask myself is, if you look back on your life and you don't try this, will you be upset? And I know the answer was yes. Because that's why I finally turn on the camera and go back and watch that video. It's cringy as fuck. Uh, I mean, it's not really that bad compared to some people's first videos, but it's like, uh, I don't know what this channel will be, but uh, <laughs> book hauls, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, so take some risks. Take one risk today in your life, okay? I'm going to get off here, but while I'm getting off here, think about it. What risk are you going to take? One risk today you have to take because it's PP's birthday. I love you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye.